Hello, and what I'd like to talk today is about solutions. Uh, these are going to be biological solutions, which uh, actually I'm going to call tonicisms, inside of a red blood cell, which these are. The first thing I need to talk about is about the solute content, because that's what's going to determine whether it's uh, hyper, hypo, or niso. Solute are the things that are dissolved inside of water, and we could actually say like Kool-Aid, and the Kool-Aid, sugar, color, and flavoring actually go into the solvent water and you mix it up, stir it up, you come up with that really cool looking concoction. That is a solution. And the solution for cells, if they're human cells, it's going to be blood. If it's a paramecium or something that lives in a pond, it's the pond water. And that's going to carry all the material that uh, the cell needs and also that the cell is going to give off. So if we look at this example, we're going to call this one example number one. Example number one has 90% water, 90% water, that's 10% dissolved material in both. This means the water is going to be going in both directions, and because the outside is equal to the inside, we call this one isotonic. I also talked about antigens for a second because we do have different blood types. Um, these antigens actually go for A, B, O, A, B blood. And what they're going to do is they're going to have material come down here and if it actually is the correct blood type it gets by if you actually get the wrong type of blood donation when you, if you lose blood. What your body will actually do is fight that blood cell and maybe even kill it which could be really bad for you as a critter. Okay, so it's ISO in both sections. Isotonic means the water's moving in both directions. Remember the water molecules. Um, I tell the kids they look like water. Uh, little Mickey Mouse things. This water molecule, even though these are both containing the same amount of water, the same amount of solute, this water molecule may actually go in and then you've got a water molecule actually in this blood that goes out. There's no real net gain. The amount that goes in comes out. Now this one actually has 0.5% solute, which means it's 95% water, and this one is 90% water, which means 10% solute, so we actually have a hyper tonic solution inside, and this side is actually has less solute. This one is a hypotonic, and we actually call uh, number one isotonic, number two is going to be hypotonic, and what this means is that the water moves from where water is high, here, moving into where water is low, and we'll actually have water going into this. Theoretically we also would have water moving out, but we'll have a lot more moving out than we have moving in because the solute content is more 10% in versus only 5% out. Remember the water goes with a concentration, concentration gradient, always moves from high to low. So we've got much more solute inside, so the water is going to be moving in that direction. Okay, let me go back to the right size. And this last example, we got 90% water in, we got 30% plasma out, 30% water. So this is 70%, this is 10%. So what we actually have is we have more outside here. So this is going to be hypertonic. This is going to be our number three. And in that case, um, this will make this one hypo. and water moves um, at the right size, water moves out in a hypertonic. But remember there's also going to be a little bit of water moving in. But the water pretty much moves out in a hypertonic. Now what that's going to do is it's going to actually, I call it raisinize, um, it's going to actually t cause this cell to shrink, shriveling. And I'll show you what that looks like and actually I'm going to show you a real picture of it. This is the way a red blood cell, this is the way a red blood cell wants to look. It's got this nice concave side in both sides. It gives it lots of surface area so that oxygen can come in when it goes towards the lungs and goes out to the cells, drops off the oxygen to the cells, picks up carbon dioxide waste, and it'll carry back to the lungs. This is one where the red blood cell is larger than it's supposed to be, and that's going to happen in this example where you have a hypotonic solution where the water will be moving into the cells. And then you have this other one which is all kind of shriveled up in all kinds of different directions. And that's going to be the raisinized one, which will be down here, which is in the hypertonic solution.
Alrighty, if I go down to this one, these are two examples. On the review sheet that I give my kids, I give them pictures that look like this and I want them to tell the difference between an animal cell. Animal cells are more oval shaped and I want to go back to blue since we're talking about water. Plant cells actually have much more of an angular shape. So these are the plant cells down here. These are the animal cells. One thing I want you to notice is that the animal cells like to be in an isotonic, which is what this one is, and the animal, uh, excuse me, the plant cells want to be in a different, envi different environment. They want to be sort of like pumped up and we like to be normal. If we get pumped up, we get what's called lyst. Lyst means cutting. The, the, the cell actually explodes like a balloon would if you put too much air. And then we have shriveled. It's called shriveled if it's an animal cell. It's called plasmalized if it's plant cell. And if you take a look, you can see that the cell membrane, which is along the cell wall in all the other examples, the cell membrane is being pulled away from the cell wall. Plants can't like this. If the vacuole, which is this object right here, which is supposed to be full of water, and you can see that it wants to be maybe this size or maybe even bigger, this is normal and the plant actually stands up. However you want that plant to look. Flaccid uh, means the plant is probably drooping. It's not dead yet, but if it doesn't get water fairly soon, it will be, and this is where the plant's probably um, dead, and no matter what you give it. If you give this one water, it'll actually pump up that vacuole, and this plant will be happy again. If you get it to this point, this plant is probably um, dead. Dropped leaves, dropped flowers, um, dead, dead. All right, so what do we have? We have a solution out here. And in order for the water to be moving in, we have more solution in, so this is going to be a hypo tonic solution. And this one, water's moving in and out. This one is the iso tonic isotonic solution. And this one we've got the water moving out, so we actually have what's called a hypertonic solution. And again, remember the cell is exactly opposite with the solution. So if it's a hypertonic solution, you've got a hypotonic cell. If it's an isotonic, you still have an isotonic. And if it's actually a hypotonic on the outside, it's a hypertonic inside because the water moves to where the hyper is. Remember, remember, hyper talks about more solute. Water moves to the solute, moves away from where the water is high. If you wanted to actually see what these things would look like, um, this is a cell. Actually, here is the cell the way the cell wants to look. Um, again, that nice concave, almost donut shape. This is a cell that's had water move into it because the solute content was higher on the inside than it is on the outside. This is hypotonic on the outside. So this is a hypertonic solution. This one, they had the water actually move out. It's been raisinized. And the only way we can do that is we have more solute outside. This is the hypertonic solution. Um, here is uh, this raisinized. Now this is really sickle cell anemia, sickle cells, so they have that sickle shape to it. But imagine this one with all these protruding angular pinnacles sticking out of it. They could do the same sort of thing. They could start sticking and they could stick to the sides, causing pain because the blood is missing. And if that was going to like your liver, your liver is probably not going to be happy, cause problems. This is the way the blood actually flows. This is the cell. You got an outside, uh, this is, I'm sorry, the vein or the artery made up of cells. It's got an outside and it's got an inside and it's got a middle. The blood flows through this example and you can see you have red blood cells carrying the oxygen carbon dioxide you have white blood cells which help you fight bacteria and then you have platelets which help you scab um, when you bleed and then you have a bunch of other things the plasma which makes up like fifty percent the liquid that's in between carries the organic materials and all the chemicals that are going to be telling your cells what to do and then the last slide is this one where i had the kids find out about the phospholipid head. This is a little bit of a review and we drew them more like this where we talked about the phospholipid phosphate being this side, lipids being this side, this one being hydro 
hydrophilic. And this one being hydrophobic. Not sure what that's doing moving like that. So we actually have those. So the tail is a fat. It's afraid of water. If you ever put oil in water, they do not want to mix. Even if you try to shake it for years, they will separate. But this is the hydrophobic part, the fatty tail. This is the phosphate, which is the hydrophilic part, and it's attached to a glycerol molecule, which makes up the fatty acid. Normally when they bend this thing, they're talking about uh, unsaturated fat, saturated fat tends to be straighter and that has to do with the hydrogen bonds that are around the individual lipid molecules not as important in the cell membrane and other than the fact that it helps it stay away so what we have here where's a a is the phospholipid then we have the head which is the hydrophilic the tail which is the hydrophobic uh, B talking about a phospholipid with a carbohydrate chain on it which would be a glycolipid C is talking about a protein with a carbohydrate chain, and that would be D, um, which would be a uh, glycoprotein. We have peripheral proteins, we have integral proteins, also with a channel in it, so channel proteins, so bigger objects can go in and out of there. Um, we go down to E, this is a cholesterol molecule, which you can sort of see right there. Cholesterol is a type of fat type of lipid. Normally we think of cholesterol as being a bad thing, but in a cell membrane, if the cell gets too cold, you know, the motion slows down, it keeps this thing more fluid. It's called a fluid dampener. If it gets too warm and it moves too fast, these will slow the whole motion down to keep the cell the way the cell is supposed to go. G, we talked about integral protein. It's also called a trans protein because it goes between the two sides. If this is the cytosol, the inside of the cell, and this would be the extracellular solution. Okay, so there is uh, the nutshell, talking about tonics, hypertonic, where the solution, solute content in the solution is higher than the other side, or hypo, where the solution is going to be lower, the, con the sol solute content in the solution will be lower, or iso being the same, can happen in plant cells and animal cells, plant cells without the cell wall, which is this thing right here, have a harder time changing shape, where we can lice, which means to cut, or we can raisinize, or shrivel, either of which are probably bad for red blood cells, and then we talked about that one as well. All right, thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.